Hello everyone and welcome back for a session by Professor Tiluttama Bhayate. Today we are going to learn about linear differential equation with constant coefficients. In this video, we will discuss about concept of complementary function. Before we go for the actual topic, let us have a recall about first order linear differential equations. That is the motivation for the topic. Consider a simple equation dy by dx plus ay equal to 0. As we are going to deal with differential equation with constant coefficient, I have considered a first order differential equation with constant coefficient where a is my constant. This can be solved very easily by separation of variables and I am going to get the solution to be y is equal to c e to the power minus ax. If you observe The coefficient which I, I, I had with y went with the power of exponential along with the opposite sign. Here I am having plus, here I am having minus. If I would have taken minus a here, I should be getting my plus a. That means my final answer would be y is equal to c e to the power ax. Right now it is plus a, so I am getting minus ax here. This is the first observation. Mathematicians also made, uh, that is why they thought about when we go for higher order differential equations, can we use the same technique or not. This is what I have observed, that the constant coefficient of y in the given equation goes in the power of exponential in the solution with opposite sign. Now, again we will come back to this concept uh, when we will discuss about the complementary function, but before equation. Now, a linear differential equation, it's an equation where your y and all its differentials have degree 1. Like this, d n y by d x raised to n plus a 1 into n or n minus 1th derivative plus a 2 into n minus 2nd derivative. So on, d y by d x and y equal to some function of x. Now, apart from functions of x, every uh, expression here will have degree 1. y will not be multiplied to any of its differentials. Then, the equation is called as linear differential equation. Here, there is something special. The a0, a1, a2, an, what I have here. All are constants. That's why an equation of this type we call as a linear differential equation with constant coefficient. Of course, it is called as higher order because the value for n, I may have more than 2. So, if it is more than 2, it is called as higher order linear differential equation. Now, uh, the expression just now we saw it is a bit difficult if your n is larger to write. So, there are many ways we can write a differential equation. This is the original one, how you normally write a differential equation. Uh, what we can do is, to simplify our writing, we can replace d by dx by capital D. Doing so, my d n y by dx raised to n that's nth order derivative, will turn out to be d raised to n times y. And so on, I'm going to get a polynomial in terms of capital D. So this is also one of the way I can write my differential equation. This is the simplified form. Further, if I denote this polynomial by some fd, I can even write it as fd y equal to phi x. Uh, we will be using most of the times this notation in theory part so that we can understand the things easily. Now, when I have a differential equation fd y equal to phi x and my right hand side phi x is 0, I call the differential equation as homogeneous differential equation. And if it is non-zero, then it is called as non-homogeneous differential equation. Okay. 
initially we will be studying the homogeneous differential equation how we will solve homogeneous DE that means I will have some expression in y and its differential and right hand side will be 0 there will be no expression of x on right hand side. The solution of homogeneous differential equation will be termed as complementary function. This is what we are going to discuss in this video. And the non-homogeneous differential equation, if I consider, I can rewrite my y to be 1 upon fd. This is an operator. So, I will consider an inverse operator here over the right hand side. And the expression I am going to get out of this will be called as a particular integral. This is topic for my next video. The solution of a non-homogeneous DE can be written as the complementary function which we obtain from homogeneous DE plus particular integral which we obtain in the second note. In this video, we are going to discuss only complementary function. Now, uh, we will just prepare a background for getting a complementary function. I will explain what is auxiliary equation. This is important term. If we consider a homogeneous differential equation, of course, linear differential equation with constant coefficient. I can observe the polynomial. I write it as f of d. Right? Now, I will just try to recall the earlier example we have discussed. In that example, what we did? dy by dx plus ay dy by dx plus a times y right equal to 0. If I replace d by dx by capital D here, I am going to get d plus a that is the polynomial I am going to get operated y equal to 0. This is how I am going to get and what we observed that this a goes in the solution. That means the root of this polynomial is going to give me the power of the exponential I am going to have in my solution. As a result, I would like to solve this polynomial which I am terming as fd but d being an operator, I cannot solve this as a polynomial. So, just for solving purpose, we will replace d by small m and when we replace the fm equal to 0, what we are going to get e is called as auxiliary equation. In short, we are going to write it as a e. So, throughout my video, I will be terming it as a e. A e means auxiliary equation. Definitely, if you have, if you are working with nth order differential equation, your auxiliary equation will be having n degree. So, if we are working with a second order differential equation, I will be getting a quadratic here. If I am working with a polynomial degree 4, then I will be getting a polynomial of degree 4 as an auxiliary equation. Solving this, I am going to get roots or solutions of my differential equation. Right? So, if this is having degree n, there will be n different solutions. As a result, my differential equation will also have n independent solutions. Now, let us come to complementary function that is solution of the homogeneous DE. Uh, for understanding purpose, we will consider a second order DE so that I can explain the concept very easily. Let, uh, let me have a second order DE, then my auxiliary equation will definitely be a quadratic equation and it will have exactly two roots. I will name them as M1 and M2. <clears throat> what we know about roots of the quadratic equation, they are either real and distinct or they are real and repeated or real and equal or they are complex depending on discriminant. Now, the rules are, rules to write the complementary function are, if I my m1 and m2 are real and distinct, I will write the complementary function like this. There will be two independent because e raised to m1x and e raised to m2x will be two independent functions. 
if my m1 and m2 are real and equal then one of the function will be e raised to m1x and to distinguish it, another function from it i'll multiply it with x that as a result my complementary function becomes c1 plus c2x times e raised to m1x and when m1 and m2 are complex they will definitely appear in pair one will be a plus ib another will be its conjugate in this way again i can write it in exponential form but simplifying that exponential form e to the power i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta i can reduce my complementary function as e to the power ax into c1 cos bx plus c2 sin b so these are the rules which we are going to follow to write a complementary function provided we are working with linear differential equation with constant coefficients and as a note you can remember the number of constants in the complementary function should be always equal to the order of the differential equation given since here we are discussing about second order de we are having two arbitrary constants c1 and c2 if we are working with three third order differential equation there will be three constant and so on. let us discuss few examples so that uh, we can understand the concept how to write the complementary function because it is one of the important concept so that i can solve my linear differential equation consider an equation d2y by dx square plus 4 dy by dx minus 5y equal to 0 you can observe all the coefficients are constant right hand side is 0 so it is a homogeneous de that means we just have to find a complementary function. I'll write an auxiliary equation by replacing my d by dx by m because d by dx will be replaced by capital D, capital D will be replaced by m. So I don't have to, I can skip one step and I can directly replace my d by dx with m to obtain auxiliary equation. So whatever is order of my de, same power I can put to m. Here I was having second order, so I'm having second power here and so on. So this is the equation I'm getting. Solving this, I'm going to get m equal to minus 5 and 1. These I can see real and distinct numbers. Since they are real and distinct, what I know from the earlier slide is I can write the complementary function to be c1 e raised to one number plus c2 e raised to another number. That is, that is why this is my solution of the given differential equation. We will discuss few more examples uh, so that I can cover all of the types here. Second example is d2y by dx square plus 4dy by dx plus 4y equal to 0. Auxiliary equation and uh, this gives me m equal to 2 if I solve this because what I observe here, I'm sorry, it should be minus 4 here instead of in the equation it should be minus 4 instead of plus 4 okay because the solution which i have written is for minus 4 m square minus 4 m plus 4 equal to 0 this gives me m equal to 2 because it is m minus 2 the whole square now for a quadratic equation i'm getting a single solution means what my roots should be repeated because ultimately for any quadratic equation i should have two roots and since I'm getting only one value, which will normally happen when we solve using calculator. So if you get only one solution and you're working with higher power, higher degree polynomial, you have to consider it accordingly. So only one solution for a quadratic equation, that means it should be real and equal. So I'll go with the note 2, tape, uh, rule 2 for writing complementary function. And my complementary function turns out to be c1 plus c2x into e to the power 2x it should be it should be 2x and this should be minus so that you can understand it clearly let us have a few more examples now you can observe d2y by dx square plus 2 dy by dx plus 5y equal to 0. 
auxiliary equation will give me roots which are complex because this is not a complete square or it cannot be factorized normally. So using the formula minus b plus or minus root b square minus 4ac by 2a, I can get this or I can use calculator to obtain this. m is minus 1 plus or minus 2i. So my a turns out to be minus 1 and b turns out to be 2. And as a result, I can write my complementary function as e to the power minus x. My a goes with the exponential and b goes with the cos sign. So you can see a is minus 1, b is 2. Accordingly, I can write my complementary function if I am working with a complex root. Now let us have some higher order differential equations here. b square minus 4, the whole square y equal to 0. This is in another form I am having. If I solve this, I am going to get the solution m is equal to plus or minus 2. Again, I am working with a fourth order differential equation. That means my auxiliary equation is of degree 4, but I am getting only two roots. And I can observe that there are two factors of m minus 2. There are two factors of m plus 2. That means both of these values are repeated twice. And as a result, I should, now the degree of differential equation is 4, order of differential equation is 4. So, I should have 4 constants in my complementary function. So, my complementary function will turn out to be, I will have c1 plus c2x with e to the power 2x. And again, same thing, I cannot use the same constants here. So, I will be using c3 plus c4x to e to the power minus 2x because both of the values are repeated. So, I, I can see four functions here 1, 2, 3 and 4. With each constant, I will get one function. And last one I would like to discuss here the d minus 3 raised to 4y equal to 0. So, what I can see is the auxiliary equation will give me m equal to 3 that is only one value I am going to get. And the same value is repeated 4 times because the degree of the auxiliary equation is 4. So, it should have 4 roots but I have obtained only 1 root. So, all roots are equal to same number 3. And that my differential equation also should have 4 independent solutions. That's why those 4 independent solutions can be 1 can be e to the power 3x. Second is x e to the power 3x. Third is x square e to the power 3x. And fourth is x cube e to the power 3x. I can all every time multiply it by x so that this function and this function will be linearly independent. To make them independent, we are multiplying every time by x. And thus, I can attach four constants to them and I can write my complementary function to be c1 plus c2 plus c3 plus c4 with four functions. Combining them, I can write a 3 degree polynomial multiplied to e to the power 3x. Unlike in earlier example, since it was repeated twice only, I had a linear polynomial up to this. Up to this I was having. Now this is repeated 4 times. So I am having a cubic polynomial and so on. If any of the equation is having um, factor repeated, let's say 3 times, then I will work with the quadratic uh, polynomial multiplied to the given expression here. Here are some examples for you to work with. Uh, purposely I have attached answers to this so that you can cross verify and the cases where you are not able to get the things properly these answers will give you the hint that what, is, what should be your answer. So enjoy solving these things and uh, wait for the next video in which uh, we'll be working with uh, particular integral, which is the process beyond this. And uh, thank you so much for listening.